Um, that's, that's all I have to say. I'm going to introduce Bob now. He's going to just talk briefly about the specifics, just in terms of tweaking um, the, the pieces and making them the best that they can be. So, Bob. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you because I wouldn't be here without you. Your video is wonderful. It's given me a chance to really see the world from my very small edit bay. It's extremely small. Um, <laughs> it's like having a satellite dish, which I've always wanted, but it's a little costly. Um, just a few things. I don't want to impose any production values on you. I would really like and appreciate if you could just follow a few simple rules um, for our production during the week when we put the show together. Um, we like to at least have one second of video pad before your in cue, which is your first word. Um, it's necessary because the director likes to have the tape actually rolling before we put it up online. It's clean. We don't go to any black. Um, the first shot should be at least three seconds long. We like to put a banner up, you know, with your country or your name. It's essential so we could absorb the opening of the piece and really people can get a sense as to what you're saying. Anything less than two seconds on any shot is very short. We get a lot of pieces that have maybe 12 frames for each shot, and that's not really enough time to really get the message across. And never pan left in one shot and then pan right. That's very jarring. Um, that's something we really avoid here at CNN. And never zoom in and then zoom out. That's also very jarring. But then again, I don't want to impose any production values on you. <laughs> Jump cuts are also a very big problem. If you have a wide shot of somebody's face, and then all of a sudden a close-up, it's like, where was that space in between? We lost some time there. That is also very jumpy. We don't like that. I don't like to have very hot video. Whenever you're shooting, I like to keep the levels under 100%. And what you could do by that is just making sure that your iris or your aperture is not opened up too wide when you're making interviews. And don't seat somebody in front of a white background because they could dissolve. You won't see them. And never wear white on camera. I know it's hot in some places for you. And you might want to wear lighter clothes in the heat. But white really fades you out. We aren't able to see you. I love Nat Sound. But when it's feeding, and a lot of you don't deal with satellites, we don't like to have the Nat Sound up too high because on the transponder, when we get it here in Atlanta, it becomes mixed all onto one channel. And we really like to hear your voices. We don't want to revoice any piece. So I think that if you send a note to wherever you're sending it to, like London or even the Tokyo Bureau, if that net sound is down and your voice is dominant, we can hear it. And the piece is like the original. I don't have to do very much to it. I really don't like to change the pieces. Also, video pad at the end when you say you're out cue for CNN World Report. I like to have video pad so the director can get out and not go to black. And if you don't have freeze capabilities, let the reporter stand after the out cue. You might feel foolish, but we won't stay on you that long. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'm here to help. You should all feel very honored. I didn't recognize Bob this morning. He's all dressed up in a suit. I usually see him in a t-shirt and jeans, huddled in his, his editing room. Let's take some questions. And, I, and I'd really like to, we'd all like to hear about what you think about the content of the program and some specials that you would like to see us do. I think you can tell how fortunate I am by working with all of these people. They're very dedicated to the program. They care about each and every one of you. I would 
just uh, going to ask uh, people that they are dealing with our reports. Usually, after the story, I send you unedited material. Uh, and several times I am wondering, am I sending you too much? Am I sending you little? Um, do you use it? Is it useful? Is it on? Oh, it's very useful. Um, we use it for teases. Mm -hmm. We use it extra video for teases. And sometimes um, our production assistant will use it in an in informational bump or something like that. So yeah, it is very useful and we do appreciate it. We might not always use it, but when we, so we do appreciate it though, yes. It's that uh, I might uh, send you too much. And you never you send too much, take my word for it. And, and, and the second question is, uh, I'm always sending the two tracks. I never mix the, 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 the first track. I said, but because you are sending it to London, do you get it okay from satellite? That depends on the person who's sending it from London. Uh -huh. And usually we have somebody like, like Octavia or Kim or Nicole who are very good at taking in feeds, mm -hmm. really trying to explain to those people as we're feeding to keep that nat natural sound down. So it might not be you on your end, but mm -hmm. when it goes to London and they're feeding it, well, that's important. Uh, I would like to ask uh, the people who are receiving our reports. Uh, traveling to Atlanta, I came straight Cyprus, London, London, Atlanta. And I wonder if it is a better way to send it, to, to send our reports, the tapes, uh, direct instead of going to London and coming uh, through satellite. I, I think that if it's a timely report, it's much more efficient for you in particular to send it to London, if mm -hmm. it's a news story. If it's one of your feature stories, I think that it's all right if there are, are flights that accommodate that mm -hmm. to send it directly here. I think that's a judgment you need to make back home. Uh, okay, thank in you. In terms of that extra video, I also wanted to add one something. We are blessed here at CNN to have one of the most creative promotion departments I have ever worked with. And they promote World Report a lot. So that extra video and that extra nat sound that we get in, we give it to them to, pro to produce and promote promotions for us. Uh, some time ago I received a telex from you requesting to run the tape twice uh, to get the commentary and the natural sound. Uh, we feed our reports to you via Intervision in Prague. And when I first tried to do that, they said, there's no point, you run your story, this is all right. And uh, do you have any uh, arrangements with the people in Prague to change that and take the story twice just to have the two tracks? No, we don't. They are the coordinator of that feed, and we have to live and do live by their rules. We have a representative. Derek Stepanek from IRT. Uh, there is a certain discrepancy as for the measurement of the, uh, of the sound level. Uh, very often we, we learn from your uh, contacts that the sound level uh, is too high. And according to our technician, it is within limit within the norm. And this is repeated many times so that we cannot explain this phenomena. Uh, no, it's in your limit, then you're okay. When it's feeding, that could be the playback operator who is peaking way over the 100% level. And that's the key to everything, is to keep everything at or between 80 and 100%. Uh, as for the question of the repetition, uh, there is practically no, uh, if it is not, uh, if we do not exceed uh, the allotted time for our news exchange, we don't object uh, to repetition so that it happens that some stories are repeated even five times or more, especially from Syria, so that if something goes wrong, we are ready to repeat it or to repeat it the following day. Thank you. Okay. Um, in some countries, uh, such as Japan, CNN has its own bureaus. And in fact, the Tokyo Bureau is right across from the street uh, for us. Um